Today I'll be solving the second challenge of Open Zeppelin Ethernaut. This challenge is called Fallout. So let's take a look at what we need to do. If I scroll down, our objective is to claim ownership of the contract. I'll scroll down, then copy the code, and I'll copy this over to Remix. So I'll hit Control C, and I'll also make sure that I deploy this contract by clicking on Get New Instance. Confirm the transaction, and while we wait for the contract to deploy, I'll go ahead and paste this code into Remix. I pasted the code inside Remix, and as a reminder, this challenge, we need to claim ownership of the contract below. Now notice that this contract is using Solidity 0.6. If you're familiar with Solidity 0.8, you would know that for a constructor, you would declare it as constructor. So this will be your constructor inside a contract. For example, if I had a contract foo, and I wanted to declare a constructor, then the syntax that I will use is to say constructor and then have some code inside here. So this is for Solidity 0.8. However, for Solidity 0.6, the way you would define a constructor, so let's again say contract foo, the way you would declare a constructor is by naming your constructor the same as your contract. So for example, inside here, I would say function, then foo. This is the same name as the contract. And then inside here, I would put the code. This was how you would have declared a constructor for Solidity 0.6. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the code. If I scroll down, again, our objective was to claim ownership of this contract. I see a constructor here. And how is this owner variable set? If I click on it, I see that it is set inside the constructor as the deployer. Is there anywhere else inside this code where we can overwrite the owner state variable? Scrolling down, I don't see anywhere else that we can set the owner state variable. So how are we going to claim ownership of this contract? Take a closer look at the constructor. Notice that the contract name is fallout, F-A-L-L-O-U-T. How about our constructor? If you take a close look at here, you can see that this function name is F-A-L-1-O-U-T which means this is not a constructor. This will be a public function that we'll be able to call. So if we call this, we'll be able to claim the ownership of this contract. So what we're going to do is we're going to declare a interface, load this contract, and then call this function fallout. Okay, so I have another file open. And what I'm going to do is declare an interface for the fallout, say pragma solidity. We'll be using 0 0.8, 0 0.8 interface fall out, then paste the function that we need to call, and then say external, it was payable, so say payable. Okay, we're done declaring the interface. What we're going to do next is load the interface at the contract address and call this function that looks like a fallout, but it is not. It is spelled F-A-L-1-O-U-T, misspelling of fallout. Back inside the Ethernet website, I'm gonna get the address to the contract by hitting F12 on my keyboard. And then inside here, I'll type contract.address. This will give me the address of the contract that was deployed. Copy this. And then back inside Remix, I'll click on the deployment tab. Make sure that we are connected to the Gorily testnet. So I'll click on injected provider. Make sure that it is on the Gorily testnet. And then we'll load this contract at the address that we copied. So paste it here. Scroll down. And then we'll call the function fallout. Okay, our transaction was successful. Let's now check that the owner of the fallout contract is our account. Now inside the interface, I forgot to declare a function to get the owner. So what I'm going to do is to get the owner state variable, it is a public state variable. So I'll declare a function called owner, function owner, external view returns address. And then we'll compile the contract and load this contract again with the updated interface. Paste the address, delete the old one, and then load the interface again. Open it, and then click on the function owner. And that is the address of the new owner. If I scroll up, you can see that it matches my wallet. The last step of this challenge is to submit the instance. Let's make sure that we won this challenge. Click confirm, and then wait for the transaction to mine. Once the transaction is processed and you've successfully completed this level, then you'll see the button change to go to the next level. This completes the second challenge of Ethernaut. See you in the next level.